are saying just how critical, safe and effective vaccines can be. Well, how much do you really know about some of the other vaccines that we all rather take for granted? As we celebrate Women's History Month, we wanted to highlight two Michigan women who created a vaccine that would go on to save countless lives. Our Kimberly Gill joins us from the newsroom with their story. Kim. And what a great story it is, Karen. These were public health researchers who devoted their lives to saving children and lifting up the people who helped them do it. Their work would go on to serve as a model around the world. You probably don't know the names of Dr. Pearl Kendrick and Dr. Grace Eldering, and they wouldn't mind that one bit. Their work was for the children, and it was for making childhood safer. They were not people who sought their face on the cover of Time magazine. But they were certainly worthy of that honor and far more. Starting in the early 1930s at the Michigan Department of Health Lab in Grand Rapids, Kendrick and Eldering developed and tested what would become one of the safest and most effective vaccines for whooping cough. Even more incredibly, they did it on their own time with a shoestring budget. During the day, they were responsible for the West Michigan branches analyses of milk, water, and other biological products um, and just routine testing. And then they did this after hours because they loved the work. They'd say, you know, we go home, feed the dogs, come back and do what was interesting. Dr. Carolyn Shapiro Shapin is a professor of history at Grand Valley State University. She's done extensive research on the pair and the vaccine they would develop. At the time, whooping cough was killing 6,000 children a year in the U.S. and causing great suffering for many more. Kendrick and Eldering created a better cough plate to go out and collect bacteria samples from children sick with whooping cough. They kept their car at the ready day or night. They lived up on Bayberry, which is a rather large hill. And so they parked it nose down so they could roll into gear and roll on. Pearl Kendrick was known as being a fast driver. They would say we'd go round the back and up the stairs because they were going into the apartments of poor people. The Great Depression was in full swing. There was no money. And so Kendrick and Eldrin got money from school boards and local doctors and the local health department. And they'll say, well, we're giving you $300, but that's it because we don't have more. When their research was in jeopardy, Kendrick reached out to Eleanor Roosevelt. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt visits the lab. There's a lot of fanfare. There's a great picture in the newspaper of them. And then she, through the Works Progress Administration, helps to fund some uh, folks to work with the laboratory. They tested their vaccine in Grand Rapids preschoolers with full parental consent, unusual for the time when many studies were conducted in orphans. To make sure every vaccine lot was safe, they injected it into each other's arms. They wanted to make sure no child was ever hurt. Their vaccine was ultimately proven effective and widely distributed. Both had extensive, impressive careers, but their legacy lives on in the work of others, too. These are people who create opportunities for themselves and create opportunities for others. They believed in the development of their people. They then supported the education of the people in their lab. So the people I talked to all said they wanted us to learn all of the different processes. As much as I wanted to learn, they would let me learn. They would encourage me to learn. There's a statue in Grand Rapids depicting two healthy children with Kendrick, Eldering, and their colleague, Loney Clinton Gordon. So what would they think of that? These are people who had the respect of those in public health. I think if they saw themselves in bronze in downtown Grand Rapids, they would be appalled and would have said, we should set up a vaccine clinic here. That is what they would value. They would value a vaccine clinic. Yeah. And our thanks to the Grand Rapids Public Library for many of those wonderful photos that you saw. After Kendrick's, uh, Kendrick's death in 1980, a tribute written to her said, quote, a life saved by prevention cannot even be identified. Who are the men and women living today who would be dead from whooping cough had it not been for Pearl Kendrick's vaccine? No doubt there were several hundred thousand of them, perhaps some of our parents and grandparents among them. A life saved by prevention can't be counted, but it most certainly counts. Oh, most Karen. definitely. I love the story. Yeah. Such incredible women. Really. Thanks for sharing, Kimberly. Sure.